Roman Reigns. Okay. Good evening and welcome to the African American Profile, only here on Roman Radio 89.7, WGLSFM. I'm your host, Omari Williams, and tonight my guest is John Staples, and he's here to talk about JBM S1 photography and all the cool stuff that he does and, uh, you know, what, what got him into photography. So, John, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the redo, right? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a pleasure to have you on the program to talk about photography and what kind of brought you to that so we'll start out we'll start off with having you tell us a little bit about yourself well um as you know my name is john john staples i uh have a business jbms1 photography which i started oh my god uh, i think it's been about 10 years now and it started out as a a hobby and turned into a i want to say profession slash fun-filled adventure. Okay. You know, it, it was, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, I started out picking up a camera, doing stuff behind the scenes for people. Um, you know, like I mentioned to you before for my motorcycle club, I was doing pictures for them, taking pictures at events and putting them out there on the Internet and everything for everyone to see, and it just developed from there. Right. You know, and it brought me to this point where I'm at now. So, was it always a passion of yours to be in the photography? Like, from a young kid, were you like, this is what I want to do? Or Well, you know, as a, uh, with some of us, as a, as a child, it, it takes a minute for us to find out where we fit in and where, what we want to do. True. Um, you know, as a child growing up in, in Chester, um, Chester, PA, it was more so, I just ran with my friends. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't a thought then. Um but then as things progressed and, you know, as I got older and started picking up a little point-and-shoot cameras, doing things, um, it turned into a love for photography. Wow. And then when I was able to invest, I, you know, I purchased my first professional in camera, which it seemed like out of all the cameras I went through, that one camera still sitting on the shelf staring at me. <laughs> you know, it was just one camera that would just never go nowhere. Like, it... Out of all the cameras that I went through, that one camera that I started out with is still sitting there. I guess as a reminder, might as well say. Right. Um, but, you know, it grew from there, and the love for photography just, I want to say, just grew. Right. To where as though um, I couldn't put it down. I couldn't put the camera down. I couldn't walk away from it. You so, know? It's, so it sounds like it started out as one of those things where it was like, I enjoy doing this. You know, some of your friends, like you said, the, the motorcycle club, they ask you, you know what, John, I see you with a camera. Do you mind taking some photos? And then it seems like you kind of got engrossed with it because of that yeah, passion and that yeah. love. Is that what happened? Well, yes, it, it did. It went that way, um, taking pictures of everybody. And then it was just like, you know, always walking around with a camera in my pocket mm-hmm. no, matter, no matter where I went. And then it's, you know, it's one of them things where life through a lens is totally different than what the eye sees. Hmm. Um, what I see through a lens is smiles and laughter. Whereas though someone was that is having a bad day, the minute you turn to point that camera at them, they pose and smile. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I, I tested it. Like right. I could see somebody arguing, and I will point that camera at them, and automatically they just stop and pose, and it's yeah. just like, wow, you know what I mean? Right. So. It's that world of seeing that life through the lens and saying, you know what, it makes people smile. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll stop the moment or freeze the moment, you know. And then when you show it to them, they're like, oh, my God, that's beautiful. Right. So that, I grabbed a hold of that, and it just it just went from there. And not only that, but creating and capturing moments. You, you're really kind of a historian if, if you think about it because you're taking this moment in time and you're capturing it forever that people – hundred years from now can can look back on it. Is that kind of neat to have that feeling too? You know, it's it's neat to have that feeling, but it's also that wow factor. Yeah. To say, you know, when I capture an image and I see it printed or hanging on somebody's wall or um, I just had a client text me a picture of their wedding invite and my picture was their wedding invite. Wow. Um, 
So when you capture that moment, it's like, wow, I did that. That's true. You know, and it's just, you know, I, I've seen people that I worked with when I first started out, and they still have the images that I did for them. And it's just like, I see them pop up on Facebook and everything, and it's just like, wow, I took that way back, <laughs> you know, early 2000s, you sure. know what I mean? And they still have it. They still hold on to it. And it's that wow factor, the whole situation. And it's like, I can't stop. Right. You know, it's like I literally, if I go somewhere, I got to tell myself, leave the camera home. <laughs> you know, leave you it home. You just enjoy it so much. It's just part of you. Right. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Exactly. Well, seeing how that's that's something that's just part of you and it's something that's kind of organic to you, I could totally understand how you could take that from being just a personal thing that you were doing and turning that into a business. And we'll talk about that right after this short break, only here on the African American Profile, only on Rowan Radio, 89.7, WGLSFM. Stay tuned. I got my, my fans watching. <laughs> oh cool! Oh neat! Oh wow! You got to got to live. Yeah, yeah cool. I put it on live Facebook Live, and people were saying, "Go ahead, you know." Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. <laughs> so y'all get to see behind the scenes first look um, at eighty nine point seven. My man Omari back there behind the board. You know, yeah. um, he invited me into his uh, African American spotlight here at Rowan Radio. Um, so y'all that's doing something positive out there, I'm gonna be pointing him to y'all. So pay attention and look look out for it. Let me get a new video, Dad. Oh, my son is over here too in the corner. <laughs> so this one was like, go live, let us watch. Oh, cool, cool. That's awesome. That's great. And they can check it out on, on air when it when Yeah, that's what's up. Oh, and it and it airs this broadcast airs Wednesday at five thirty on what is it, eighty nine point seven? Yep. On Rowan, is that Rowan's website? Yeah, it's on wgls.rowan.edu. You heard what he just said. Yeah, wgls. <laughs> dot Rowan. Dot Rowan. Dot edu. Dot edu. You can find this, and then it goes podcast. Um, somebody said, "Oh, my favorite station." Oh wow, cool. cool. <laughs> Check us out, man. We got plenty of episodes up there. John will be another one in that long line of uh, a great shows. So I'm excited. So wait, when you do a break. It's like advertising really run through automatically. Yeah, it's it's um local it's local um stuff and it's also like local businesses that sponsor the station. There's more sponsorships than commercial. So he has to run it. He has to run it for a time frame and then it uh, goes back to him. So soon you say so if somebody listen over there for them like to run the advertisement. So you say take a break on Wednesday. They will. Okay. On Wednesday but he will. just knows the time. Yeah, I gotta, I'm keeping keeping the time here so I know when to break. <clears throat> Very cool. <clears throat> I'm ready to get back in if you are. Mm -hmm. And we're back here on Roman Radio 89.7 WGLSFM. I'm your host, Omari Williams, for the African American Profile. And I'm here with John Staples talking about JBMS1 photography. And, John, it, before we went to break, we were talking about your passion for photography. And that's what makes it 100 times better when you can enjoy doing what you're doing. So, so when did you decide to take it from just a passion and something you were doing in your personal life to then make it a business and, and take it that way? Well, it's it was a decision. It took a decision and a lot of research. <clears throat> Excuse me, a lot of research mm -hmm. before I actually went into doing the photography thing. Um, I started out when I was sitting in my basement and it came to me. And this was like early 2000 six or seven um the idea came to me and i had to think of a name mm. what would i call it and i remember sitting in the basement staring at the ceiling and a lot of things went through my head and me business minded i said you know what i already got a name and i wrote it down jbms with the number one mm -hmm. and i just added photography so someone asked me what it meant and I said, well, it's my initials. Mm -hmm. John B. McClendon Staples, the number one. Well, why the number one? Because it's only one of me. I like that. So that's why I added the one to it. Mm -hmm. So with that, I just branded it. I had a, a guy I was working with at that time. Uh, he designed a logo for me. I was sitting there drawing. You know, I was working for a company and in Philadelphia, and I was sitting there drawing at my desk, drawing different things. 
And he said, what are you doing, man? I said, trying to design a logo. Mm -hmm. See how I wanted to go with this. He said, man, just get that to me. Let me do it. I'll bring it back to you in the morning. So in the morning, he came back, and he said, here you go. And he showed me three things, laid three different pieces of paper in front of me. And that's where this developed. Right. You know, um, the logo developed just from an idea, and it was just like, okay, I got it. Now right. let's go with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, today here I am. Not only that, it was the blessings, you know, being blessed, um, you know, keeping God first. Right. And the blessings followed. Absolutely. You know, being honest, being real with people, and the blessings follow. So here I am today. That's true. Did you find it difficult to get into that kind of business aspect? Like, one thing one thing I think that was very interesting for you is um, talking to you is talking about you learning and the research and, you know, starting out with little pieces one at a time. Was that kind of difficult to wrap all this stuff up? Or did you, because of your passion for photography, did you find that it was easy for you to start I just want to learn more about it and, and then start to work that into your business. Well, I had to do it step by step. Okay. I had to learn the fundamentals first. Okay. Which was learning a camera. Learning to take it out of auto, put it in manual, make the camera do what I wanted it to do. Right. Not what the camera wanted to do. Because there's always that factory setting on a camera where the camera thinks for you. Right. So I had to take it out of that and learn it in manual mode to say, I want the camera to do what I want it to do. Mm -hmm. So it was learning the fundamentals. Then after learning the fun fundamentals, it was lighting, mm -hmm. you know, learning the lighting part. Um, then that's when, you know, as I mentioned to you before, I met a, a friend of mine named Greg Lee, mm -hmm. which was in photography also. And he taught me a, a lot about lighting. And we just fed off each other. Right. What I didn't know, he gave me. You know what I mean? And then things that he wanted to know, I gave him because I was so far in it that I had things that he didn't. Right. So we kind of fed off of each other. So then came the part of, you know, him discussing lighting with me, him uh, discussing equipment, you know. And I just took that and, and ate it all up and developed, right. you know, the digested piece by piece by piece and because if you try to do it all at once you'll go crazy right there's so much it's so much so you have to take it piece by piece you know take it this step then this step then this step and then once you learn everything you put it all together and not only that but also different types of events because one thing talking to you before um, one thing that I thought was fascinating was that you were saying it's different setting up for a wedding than it is a sporting event than it is portraits so you, you kind of also had to t tailor your learning to that as well, right? Exactly. Um, I had to learn the lighting situations for everything, mm -hmm. whether it was a low-light fashion show um, or a well-lit fashion show or if it was portraits or if it was daylight, outside in daylight. I had to learn settings for all of that. Right. I had to learn, you know, with that came investing in, more equipment and better equipment. Sure. You know, with anything, you start here and work your way up. So it was like, you know, graduating from one camera to the next camera, then trading that camera in to the next camera till you get to a point where you're comfortable and you say, okay, I'm cool with what I have now. Right. So with that, it was studying for all different lighting situations. Mm -hmm. You know, where you can go to a fashion show um, and can't use flash you know what i mean right. um you know then when i i started working with lamont and gina from atlantic city fashion week it was i had to learn how to shoot the fashion show and the lighting right you know when i started out i didn't know and i left and i came back now mm -hmm. it's like i know so now i'm in it full fledged sure you know um so that was another aspect of it right. so it's whether you're shooting with light or without light, you have to learn how to do it all. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very interesting. And then looking at looking at different um, events and stuff you go to, is there a favorite event or a favorite thing that you that, that you like to shoot the most, or do you find yourself just shooting kind of whatever comes your way? Well, I got kind of hooked on the fashion industry. Shout out to Lamont and Gina. Um, from Atlantic City Fashion Week, um, the CEOs and producers of Atlantic City Fashion Week. Um, 
they literally took me and welcomed me um, even after I left for a certain period of time mm-hmm. because I felt as though my images wasn't where they need to be for them to use them right. within their business. Um, I left, and they welcomed me back with open arms. <coughs> um, so I kind of got hooked on fashion shows. Um what people don't realize is what goes on with the fashion show, not just being in the press pit taking the pictures, but after that, how the models and the designers and everything come after you as right. a photographer because you have these images of their designs. Right. You know, and it's amazing. Like the people I've met, um, the the models, the designers, things like that that I've met during the course of these shows. Sure. It's just amazing. And I'm kinda hooked on that now. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas though I'll do a fashion show in a minute, like, (laughs) you know, I I love it. Exactly. And I think um, one thing that's interesting about being a business owner, you kind of have more autonomy than someone who works for someone else does. You can say, I want to do this job or I don't want to do this job. Do you kind of enjoy that aspect of being the owner of your own business? I, I love it with just that, not the freedom, but also the aspect of I had to learn how to pick and choose. Oh, that's interesting, too. You know, I had to learn, you know, just because it seemed like it was gold that it wasn't. So with the progress, with the learning progress, I had to learn to say, okay, I'm not going to do that event. Like, turn that event away and do this event. So it was like I had to learn how to pick and choose because everything was not what people portrayed it to be. Sure. And then, you know, now as I'm older and I've grown in it, it's more of, you know, I like the events with the older crowds, um, you know, m- older, mature crowd and the nicer venues and things like that that I look for. And also a little bit more corporate corporate type stuff that I look at yeah. as well because, you know, everybody needs a photographer. Yeah, always. You know, so... You know, with, like I said, with that, I had to pick and choose. And I, I love that aspect of it. You yeah. know, being able to choose, no, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do this. Absolutely. But not only that, but it can give you variety, too. So you're not, as much as you love fashion shows, you can do, let me, well, let me break it up with some portraits. Let me break it up with, um, I'll do a wedding this weekend because I want to try something different. Or if there's an event or something that maybe you haven't tried in, in the past, now that you have some of the lighting down and no different lighting for different events, you might just try it, you know. Yeah, I, I try to, I try to, put my hands in a little bit of everything. Right. Because if not, I won't learn. So if it's you know, I shoot, I'll shoot weddings, I'll shoot concerts, I'll shoot fashion shows, I'll, you know, I'll do a little portraits. I love taking pictures outside. You know, right. I'll do a photo shoot here and there. You know, and when things are brought to me that. I'm not sure I'll study up on it to say, oh, yeah, I can do that. That's not a problem. Absolutely. And then, you know, I'm off and running with it, you know. So it's that aspect of it is just, you know, like there's nothing in the photography world that I won't try. And I I find that interesting because I know you just added something new with doing photo booths, too. Yes, yes. Which are a lot of fun. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of fun. So what brought you to doing that, to to branch out of that? The photo booth was a branch of me that people were asking for. Oh, wow. Um, You know, with what I was doing at events, you know, people was asking for a photo booth and everything, you know, despite the step and repeat setup with the print on the spot pictures, it's people were looking for that photo booth for that nostalgic feeling, Mm -hmm. you know, and I said, you know what time came and after talking about it, talking about it with my, with my friend Greg, I called him. I said, you know what? I'm ready to invest in a photo booth. And he was like, really? I said, yes, I'm going to do it. You know, and it was just, it went from there. And, I mean, this, you know, I put a, a thing on uh, Facebook, which has been getting a lot of attention, eight reasons why you should have a photo booth at your event. Wow. And it's getting a lot of attention, you know, um, being advertised on Facebook. Um, 
and it's drawn a lot of attention right. because, you know, they go to it and read the eight reasons why. And the fun, the nostalgic feeling, the the props, the, you know, everything is, right. is, is there to say, remember when, mm -hmm. you know. And then after the photo booth event with the photo booth, every time somebody looks at that strip, they're going to be like, wow, we had so much fun in that photo booth. I still, I have mine on my wall. I have some from different weddings and stuff like mm -hmm. that and, and a couple other different events. And they're fun to look at. You remember back to that day. It, it, and that's what's so great about photography is that th those pictures take you back to where you were at that time. Right, exactly. And uh, especially the photo booths because they they're just so much fun. And you remember spending the time with your friends. and Everybody piling up in the photo booth, acting yeah. all crazy, holding the different signs. You know, and then you look back at it like, wow, we had fun that night. We had fun, yeah. You know, so that was another reason and, you know, like I said, people were calling and asking, hey, do you have a photo booth? No, I don't have a photo booth, but this is what I can do for you. Yeah. So it kind of went from there. And then, like I said, it was like, you know what? Let me invest in a photo booth. And that's yeah. what I did. I, I found somebody who was closing down shop and was looking to get rid of everything. And it was being blessed that, yeah. I, I, that it was bought to me. Sure. You know, so I went ahead and invested. And now I, I spend a lot of time promoting it, you know, um, to – and this is – and. Very reasonable and affordable. Right, and that's the key. You know, and that's, you know, as we talked before, that's what I was doing to separate myself from all other photographers, offering something at a price that's more affordable um, and quality work. Right. You know, so it's just breaking away from all the thousands of photographers that's out there to say, hey, listen, here I am and here's what I offer. And I, I want to talk a little bit more about that, the things that you different, do to differentiate yourself, because I do think that's interesting. Like you said, there's a lot of options for photography, but exactly what you bring, I think, is very interesting. We'll talk a little bit more about that right after this short break, only here on Rowan Radio 89.7 WGLS-FM. Stay tuned. Segment number two. Number six minutes. What did that, like, what did